in this part, uh, this part is going to be exactly in the same format. We are going to have uh, around 15 minutes talk, and then again, a practice of around 45 minutes. And in this part, we are going to create polynomial constraints. So, so a short reminder. Uh, we are proving the following statement, that there is a number x such that if we compute the Fibonacci square sequence starting with one and x modulo our prime, the last element is this element here. And in this part, we are going to use the stuff you just uh, computed in the, in the notebooks, the trace, the generator of G, and uh, F of X, the trace polynomial. So let's look at these, uh, this set of constraints here. In order to prove our, our statement, we need to show that A0 equals one, and we need to show that uh, the last element equals to the, this specific number. And we need to show that each three consecutive elements, uh, this equation here holds. If our sequence AN satisfies these constraints, it exactly means that the original statement is true. So it is enough to prove these three constraints. In this talk, we are going to modify these three constraints, we are going to do a set of reductions to get another statement, a new statement in a different form. And this statement will be such that if this statement is true, it implies that these three constraints hold on our sequence. So it, be, it will be um, enough to show the, the correctness of the new statement. So in this talk, I'm going to walk you through step by step. Actually, we are going to have three steps of reductions to get the new statement. And the new statement is the following. So we will show that there is a polynomial f such that three rational functions that we will create from this f, p0, p1, and p2, are polynomials. f is going to be the trace polynomial you computed. And if you don't know what, what rational functions are, so a rational function is a mathematical object in the form of a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Sometimes this object is actually a polynomial, just like integers and rational numbers, right? For example, a four divided by two, it's an integer, it's, it's two. But three divided by two, it's not an integer. So the same for polynomials. Sometimes a polynomial divided by a polynomial gives us a polynomial and sometimes it doesn't. So our statement would be that there is a polynomial f such that three rational functions are actually polynomials. Okay, so let's dive into to the reduction. The first step of the reduction is going to be modifying our constraint on a n to be a set of constraint on f of x. So let's remind ourselves f of x, this is the trace polynomial uh, to the right, you see x and f of x, the powers of g, and our sequence. And please note that the way we created f, instead of saying a0 equals 1, we can say f of x equals 1 for x equals g to the power of 0, right? Because we computed x, the, the result of the interpolation f, uh, we did it in a way that f of g to the power of zero is a zero. The same for the second constraint. Instead of writing that the last element should be this specific element, we can say that f equals to this number for x equals g to the power of 1022. And lastly, okay, so we have our constraint on the each three consecutive elements. We want this equa the equation to the left. And please note that uh, in order to shift from one row to the next one, we need to multiply by g. So x, gx, and g square x are three consecutive rows. So instead of writing the, our constraint using a n, we can just writing, writing it using f of x, f of gx and f of g square x, 
for any uh, power of g. There, uh, all the power of g between 0 to 1020. For example, if we look at g to the power of 5, we want the equation to hold between f of g to the power of 5, f of g to the power of 6, and f of g to the power of 7. So we modified our constraint from being constrained on a n to a new set of constraints in the language of f of x. And if f of x satisfies this constraint, it means that the original statement is true. So it's sufficient to show the set of constraint on f of x, and we can forget about the previous representation, the constraint on a n. We can now just talk about f of x and its constraint. So this was the first step in the reduction. Next, we are going to talk about roots of polynomials. So z is a root of p if p of z is 0. So if we have our first constraint, f of x equals 1, for x equals g to the power of 0, I'm just shifting it, shifting 1 to the left-hand side. It's just the same. And instead of saying f of x minus 1 equals 0 for the relevant g, I can write, I can say that g to the power of 0 is the root of f of x minus 1, just by the definition of a root of a polynomial. The same for the second constraint. And the last constraint. So here we have a set of roots, g to the power of i for all the relevant i's. So we have a group, a set of uh, roots. And again, if the polynomials to the left, g to the power of 0, g to the power of 1022, and g to the power of i for any relevant i, if all these elements are roots of the polynomials to the right, it exactly means that the original statement is true. So again, we can forget about the previous representation. It is uh, sufficient to show that these uh, elements are roots of the relevant polynomials. So this is the next step of the reduction. For the last step, as I promised you, we are going to get a rational, rational functions. So for that, we need to state a theorem. I'm not going to prove it, um, but it's not very hard to prove it. So z is the root of polynomial p if and only if x minus z divides p. OK, so to remind you the definition, x minus z divides p if p divided by x minus z is a polynomial. So let's see an example. Here, 2 is the root of the blue polynomial. If you plug in 2 in x squared minus 3x plus 2, you get 0. This is a root. And indeed, when you divide it by x minus 2, you get a polynomial. You get x minus 1, which is a polynomial. But when you look on the right-hand side, so 2 is not a root of the blue polynomial. If you plug in 2, you don't get 0. And indeed, when you divide it by x minus 2, you don't get a polynomial. You get a rational function, which is not a polynomial. Just like, as I mentioned before, integers and rational numbers. So we are going to use the theorem in order to modify our uh, constraints. So we have the, the constraint, the first one, g to the power of 0 is the root of fx minus 1. And instead of saying, uh, stating this, we can state that fx minus 1 divided by x minus g to the power of 0 is a polynomial. I'm just applying the theorem above. The same for the second constraint. g to the power of 1022 is a root of the relevant polynomial, can be translated to this rational function here. OK. The last constraint. Here we have a set of roots. So we are going to apply the theorem over and over again and to divide by the product of x minus g to the power of i for all the relevant i's. Okay, this constraint is a bit, um, it's, it, it's a bit problematic for us because computing the product is not very efficient. It's linear in the number of roots. 
So I'm going to do a small trick here. I'm not going to explain why I'm doing it. Uh, you have a bit, some of the details in the notebooks, but because of how we picked G, uh, the product between, uh, of uh, X minus G to the power of I for I between zero to 1023 gives us a, a simple polynomial. X to the power of 1024 minus one. This polynomial is much easier to compute. To use it, I need to, to divide by the unwanted factors. So I get um, the rational function in the bottom here. Maybe for you, right now, it's look much more complicated than the original one we had, but for a computer, it is much easier to compute it. So we are going to use this format instead of the format at the top. Great, so we have our three rational functions, P0, that we got from the first constraint, P1 that we got for this, from the second constraint, and P2 that we got from the third constraint. And again, if all the PIs are polynomials, we get that the original statement is true. So exactly as before, we can forget about previous rep representation about roots of polynomials, and we can stick with showing that these three rational functions are polynomials. That finishes our set of reductions. We started by stating a set of constraints on our sequence, the original sequence AN, and we shifted our statement to talk about rational functions and polynomials. Okay, we did it because this is going to be the input for the next step of our protocol. We just translated it from one language to another language. So just a short overview. Um, we started by, um, I'm going to give the overview on the first constraint, just to remind us all what we just did. We started with A, zero equals one. Then the first step was translating it to, to be in the language of uh, our uh, trace polynomial, f of x equals one for the relevant g. Second step, we stated that g to the power of zero is the root of the corresponding polynomial. And eventually, we created a rational function from these polynomials, and we finished with saying that there is a polynomial f such that this rational function is a polynomial. That's what we did for the first constraint, for the second constraint, and for the third constraint. Great, so we are left with three rational functions, and we want to show that these are polynomials. And luckily, instead of showing them uh, three times, one for P0, one for P1, and one for P2, we have some trick to do it once and for all for the three of them together. So we are taking a random, random linear combination of these Ps. So we take alpha zero, alpha one, and alpha two, which are random elements from the field, and we combine these three uh, rational functions in that way. We call it the composition polynomial. We still have to show that this is a polynomial. And luckily, with high probability, if all the PIs are polynomial, um, CP is a polynomial if and only if all the PIs are polynomial. Okay, I'm not going to show it. It's not very hard to show it by yourself, but uh, because of that, we can just show that CP, sorry, we can just show that CP is a polynomial, and it will be enough for us. And then we will going to commit on CP using a Merkle tree like you just did uh, in the previous part. And that uh, finishes the second part of the protocol. In part three, you are going to see how to prove that CP is actually a polynomial. But first, you are going to do some coding. So you will code P0, P1, and P2 then create the composition polynomial, and eventually you're going to commit on it using a Merkle tree like you just did.